Hi, I'm Vicky Glukowski Broad, Diverse History's Record Specialist at the National Archives, and today I've got an amazing document to show you. So here we have a document, Foreign Office Record, FO95604. Um, and essentially this record is about uh, Chevalier de Aon. So it's actually um, an item right on the back of this volume. Chevalier was actually a French spy, soldier and diplomat. This record is a calling card belonging to Chevalier. Um, and a calling card would have been the kind of item that you would essentially leave with someone if you were visiting their house and you wanted to say that you'd drop by. It's really, really interesting um, because of the title used on it. So what we actually have here is uh, the words Mademoiselle Dayon. So in our collections at the National Archives, we would say that Chevalier is probably one of the earliest known examples of gender nonconformity. Um, and in our current language, we might consider them now to be transgender. Essentially, as far as we can tell, Chevalier was uh, presenting as male for most of their life and then by the time of this record, were identifying as female. After the Seven Year War, Chevalier published scandalous secret correspondence, uh, re revealing French ministerial corruption. And it was on this basis that they were sent to England. And so this calling card, this incredible small item, is from this moment in time uh, where Chevalier d'Aeon was living at Brewer Street uh, in Soho. So there was precedent to Chevalier in living as a woman. And that was before this moment in time when they actually infiltrated the Russian court. However, it's unclear whether this was maybe a choice or a disguise for their spying. After 1777, they lived as a woman and continued to live that identity for the rest of their life. What we don't know about Chevalier is uh, fully how they would have identified. Uh, in their own words at the time, um, so I'm using the pronouns them and they for that reason. Um, so it's a really, really unique example, particularly because it does show how they were identifying to some extent at that time. Chevalier's gender identity was actually hotly debated at the time in the 1800s and continues to draw attention today. What the case of Chevalier shows is that no matter what your gender identity is, you can have a truly fascinating life. Chevalier continued to be attacked politically in England, um, and that's actually shown in some really fascinating recently discovered court documents relating to a libel case, and even records of an attempted assassination on Chevalier in 1765. Chevalier seemed to have used their notoriety to their advantage, staging these fencing tournaments that actually gathered huge crowds and were a real spectacle. It's fascinating that we have this glimpse into their life. There's huge amounts about Chevalier that are still unknown, um, but because of their diplomatic role, we have various records in our collections through state papers and these foreign office records. This is an incredible document because it's such an early example of gender nonconformity in our records. Um, so it's a really rare kind of explicit example of someone to some extent uh, varying their gender identity through their life. 